Two years ago today, Jeremy Corbyn was elected leader of the Labour Party, winning a sensational 59.5% of the vote. And it's fair to say that what's happened in the last 24 months has defied all reasonable expectation. A year later, he was challenged by Owen Smith to another leadership contest. But he didn't just win, he won with an increased mandate, uh, winning 61.8% of the vote. And now he is in charge of a party with more members than any other on Europe's centre-left, meaning it finally has the financial means to compete with the Conservatives and their friends in big business. But it's not just about his personal mandate or the size of the party's membership, as good as these things are, it's also about results. Labour have done very well at a local level since then. They've won the mayoral races of Manchester, Liverpool, London and Bristol. And then, of course, there was a crowning achievement of the general election this June. Everybody said that Jeremy Corbyn's Labour would be crushed. It would be a rerun of 1983 and that Theresa May's majority could go beyond 100. Well, they were wrong. She lost her majority altogether. And Labour, having lost seats at each general election since 1997, gained 3.5 million votes, seeing their share of the vote increase by more than any other party since Clement Attlee's Labour in 1945. Truly remarkable. And given the background to that, the context of a hostile media and a parliamentary Labour Party constantly trying to undermine Jeremy Corbyn, I think it is the most unique accomplishment uh, in British political history. I can't think of anything which can rival it. So congratulations to Jeremy Corbyn and congratulations to everybody who supported him and believed in him. You've been proved right so far. But that's the last two years. What about the next two? We need to have more people registered to vote. Young people, people from working class backgrounds. Theresa May is a liar. So it meant we only had six weeks to do it last time because she called that snap election. But now we need a permanent campaign funded by the unions and the party and around CLPs to register more people to vote. And in addition to that, we need to democratise the party. Candidate selection for potential MPs cannot be decided by cliques. It needs to be decided by members. And people like Ian McNichol have to be directly elected because they have so much power. And if we're going to democratise Britain, we have to have a democratic party. And then finally, whoever replaces Jeremy Corbyn, whoever is the next leader of the Labour Party, has to be decided uniquely by the members. After all, they had the intelligence to identify Jeremy Corbyn as the person able to bring Labour back from the brink proving not just the experts, but most of Labour's MPs wrong. The more they are empowered, the more successful Labour will be.